This is English lecture for third grade from the platform of Al Mustafa University College, and I am Ms. Etia. Now we will talk about different words and different meanings between them. Number one, can and ben. First, we have to know can and ben are past participle, and we can use past participle with perfect tense. How we can make the sentence in perfect tense? Subject has have plus past participle. Subject plus has and have plus past participle. For example, she's gone to Portugal. She's gone to Portugal. That means she's there now. That means she's there now. Second example, she's been to Portugal. She's been to Portugal. Sometimes in her life, but now she has returned. That's what the difference between gone and been. That means when I have to use gone and when I have to use been. Okay? Number two. Ever and never. We use ever in questions and never in negative sentence. That means ever comes with the questions, never comes with negative sentence. For example, have you ever been to Russia? I have never been to Russia. When I use ever, I use it with Question. When I use never, I use it with negative. With negative. Number three. Yet and just. Yet and just. Yet with a question and negative. Just with positive sentence. Positive sentence means no question, no negative. For example, have you done your homework yet? Another example, I haven't done it yet. Example for just, I have just done it. I have just done it. Number four, much and more. Much, sorry, and many. Much comes with uncountable nouns, but many comes with countable nouns. For example, there is much wine in the fridge. There is much wine in the fridge. Here I use much because I have wine, and wine is uncountable nouns. Another example, how many people are there in the room? Here I use many. Because I have people and I can count people. Please go to next page. English intermediate phrases. English intermediate phrases. Number one. How is it going? How is it going? We can pronounce that phrase like how is it going? How is it going? I can read it like how is it going? But I have to pronounce that. How is it going? How is it going? And its meaning, how are you? Or how are the life? Number two, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? When I pronounce this phrase, I have to say like that, what have I been up to? What have I been up to? And its meaning is, what did you do since the last time I saw you? Number three, how have you been? How have you been? When I want to pronounce that phrase, I have to say like that. How have I been? How have I been? And its meaning is, what did you do since the last time I saw you? Number four, 
the good answer for the above two phrases, I mean number two and number three. When I ask you and use one of them, you have to answer me. I've been and bought adjective uh, to describe your state. Like, how have you been? How have you been? I have been not bad. I have been tired. I have been excellent. Number five. Do you want to? Do you want to? And I can pronounce this phrase Diawana. Diawana. When I use it, uh, when, it, sorry, we use it when we suggest something, to do something. Okay? Suggest to do something like, do you want to go to cinema? Do you want to go to cinema? Number six, when you accept my suggestion, you can say, sure, sounds good. Sure, sounds good. Number seven, when you refuse my suggestion, you can say, sorry, I can't. Sorry, I can't. And you can give a reason. Sorry, I can't because I'm busy. Uh, that's enough today. Thank you very much.